Welcome to Legion Builds, where I guide you on how to bring fictional characters into Dungeons & Dragons. This video and all my content is made possible by my Patreon supporters. It's also dedicated to everyone who subscribes to my channel. I really do mean it when I say you guys are keeping this fun, so thank you. Join the Legion today for just $1 and help decide next week's new character. We're heading into Hawkins, Indiana. From Stranger Things, it's Nancy Wheeler versus Steve Harrington. Today we're returning to the world of Soul Eater with Maka Albarn. Rising to elite status inside the DWMA, Maka is a gifted individual in combat capabilities and spiritual awareness. Combined with her strong sense of right and wrong and caring nature, Maka is a true force inside Lord Death's army. In combat, Maka teams up with Soul, her demon weapon, who transforms into a scythe. While scythes tend to be rather unyielding, Maka moves with amazing speed, grace, and range quickly adjusting her stance to take on opponents from all angles. For today's build, we'll be using the Player's Handbook. We're using Standard Point Array to make things easy should you use another system, and we are multi-classing, so keep an eye on those minimums. We'll start things off with Intelligence at 15. Out of the top three Meisters, you are by far the most brilliant. Strength will be 14. You might be small, but scythes are not light weapons. Dex falls in at 13. You are an incredibly fast and nimble fighter, especially when you're using such a large weapon. Wisdom comes in at 12. Like I said, you have amazing awareness. Con will be low with a 10, and we're gonna have to dump charisma, which I really don't like. People like you, but we have to dump something, and uh, yeah, just blame Standard Point Array for this. Maka is a human. Bearing human grants you a free feat and skill with your stat improvement. Place plus one into dex and intelligence. For your feat, Great Weapon Master improves your capabilities with heavy weapons like your scythe. Once per turn, when you score a critical hit or reduce a creature to zero with a melee weapon, you can make another melee weapon attack as a bonus action. Also, before you make an attack with a heavy weapon, you can take a negative five penalty to the attack and then add plus ten to the attack's damage if you hit. For your skill, grab Investigation. For background, take the skills Arcana and Religion. We'll start things off with your Scythe. Level 1 Fighters start off with two skills. Take Acrobatics and Athletics. Fighting Style gives you great weapon fighting. You can reroll one or two on damage dice when you make an attack while wielding a weapon with two hands as long as it has the two-handed or versatile properties. Second win lets you ignore damage by healing yourself 1d10 plus your fighter level once per short or long rest. You also have proficiencies in all melee weapons. For your scythe, use either a glaive or a halberd. Doesn't matter which as they use the exact same stats. Level 1 Wizards begin with spell casting. You have a spell book that contains all your known spells and can prepare a total number of spells that equal your intelligence modifier plus wizard level per long rest. Arcane Recovery lets you recover used spell slots after a short rest that equal your wizard level but can never be higher than 5th level. For your spells, Booming Blade energizes your weapon. Now when you hit a creature within 5 feet, should they willingly move after, they take 1d8 thunder damage. Bad news though. You can't use this with your scythe because you need a free hand and scythes are two-handed. Don't worry, we'll fix this later. We're taking this now so we don't have to wait for when we get it. Also, you can just use other weapons for this. Light imbues an object you touch, like your scythe, with magical light. It now sheds bright light in 20-foot radius and dim light in another 20-foot radius. Mage Armor gives you an AC of 13 plus dex for 8 hours while you're not wearing armor because evidently there aren't many animes where the hero wears armor but does wear a skirt. Seriously, armor is great. Wear armor. Shield adds plus 5 to your AC as a reaction and automatically stops magic missile. Detect Magic allows you to sense the presence of magical effects or items, and by using your action you can sense the school of magic that is being used. Jump triples your jump distance for 1 minute. Feather Fall stops all fall damage no no matter the height with the reaction. Long Strider adds plus 10 to your movement for one hour. You get one more cantrip, have fun. Maybe you should customize this and take a ranged magical attack because I'm not giving you any. Level 2 Fighters gain action surge. You can now give yourself a free action once per short or long rest. Level 3 Fighters now have access to their subclass. Battle Master, found in the Player's Handbook, gives you all the great fighting skills you need. 
Combat Superiority grants you four superiority dice that you can use to perform special maneuvers that you learn over the course of this build. You regain all superiority dice after a short or long rest. At this level, you know three maneuvers. For those maneuvers, Lunging Attack increases your weapon's reach by five feet by spending one superiority dice. If you hit with this attack, you can add the superiority dice to the damage. Remember this as well. Your scythe already has a 10-foot reach, and this will bring it up to a 15-foot reach. Sweeping Attack allows you to carry on your attack to another creature with the same attack roll by spending one superiority dice. Should the other creature be within 5 feet of the original target and the original attack roll would hit the second target, you can deal damage equal to superiority dice. Tactical Assessment lets you spend one superiority dice and add it to an Investigation, History, or Insight check. Level 4 Fighters earn our first ability score improvement, and it's time to fix your spellcasting with a feat. Warcaster gives you advantage on con saves made to maintain your spells when you take damage. You can cast spells that require your hand when you're holding a weapon with both hands. And finally, when a creature provokes an attack of opportunity, you can use your reaction to cast a spell at the creature, as long as the casting time is one action and it targets the creature. By the way, you're character level 5 now. Booming Blade now does an extra D8 of thunder damage on the original hit, and now does 2D8 thunder damage when they willingly move. Level 5 fighters receive extra attack. You can now attack twice with a single attack action. Level 2 Wizards gain their subclass. Let's make you a better protector with the School of Abjuration found in the Player's Handbook. Abjuration Savant lets you copy any Abjuration spell to your spellbook in half the time and calls to do so. Arcane Ward lets you become stronger when you cast an Abjuration spell at first level or higher, like Shield or Mage Armor. We'll get some more. When you do so, you create a magical ward on yourself. This ward has HP equal to twice your wizard level plus intelligence modifier until you finish a long rest. This ward takes damage meant for you until it hits 0 HP, which it will no longer absorb damage until you cast another abjuration spell to recharge it, and this recharge will only regain HP equal to twice your spell level. For your new spell, protection from good and evil wards one willing creature you touch, including yourself, against certain types of creatures. These creatures are aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey fiends, and undead. While protected, these creatures have disadvantage on attack rolls against the warded creature. The warded creature can can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed. You must maintain this spell for 10 minutes. Gift of Alacrity grants you a D8 to your initiative rolls for 8 hours. Level 6 fighters earn another ability score improvement, Bump Up Intelligence. Level 3 wizards now have second level spells. Magic Weapon transforms a normal, non-magical weapon into a plus one weapon for one hour while you maintain the spell. By the end of this build, you'll be able to upcast this to a plus two weapon. For your other spell, take what you want. Level 4 wizards earn another ability score improvement. Let's get strength up a bit for better attack and damage. For your new spells, take what you want. You also get another cantrip, have fun. Level 7 Battle Masters receive Know Your Enemy. You can now study an enemy outside of combat for one minute to learn two facts about them. After one minute, you learn what these two facts are compared to yours. These facts can be Strength Score, Dex Score, Con Score, AC, Current HP, Total Class Levels, or Total Fighter Class Levels. This is unlimited, so as long as you have one minute outside of combat, you can keep learning facts. For your new maneuvers, Evasive Footwork lets you spend one superiority dice to increase your AC until you stop moving, equal to the superiority dice. Parry lets you reduce damage from a melee attack by spending one superiority dice as a reaction. You can now reduce the damage by the superiority dice plus your dex modifier. Finally, you now have five superiority dice. Your character level 11 now, Booming Blade now deals 2d8 extra thunder damage to the original target, and now they receive 3d8 thunder damage if they willingly move. Level 8 fighters earn another ability score improvement, cap off intelligence. Level 9 fighters gain Indomitable. You can now reroll one failed saving throw, including death saves, once per long rest. 
Level 5 wizards now have 3rd level spells. For your new spells, Intellect Fortress grants resistance to a willing creature within 30 feet that you can see including yourself. For 1 hour while you maintain the spell, the creature has advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saves. Haze sends you into a bit of madness for 1 minute while you maintain the spell. While active, your speed is doubled, you gain plus 2 to AC, you have advantage on dex saving throws, and you gain 1 extra action each turn. This action can be one weapon attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use object. When the spell ends, you can't move or take an action until your next turn. Level 6, Abjuration Wizards receive Protected Ward. You can now protect your friends with your Arcane Ward. When a creature you see within 30 feet takes damage, you can use your reaction to absorb the damage, but if the damage brings the Arcane Ward to zero, any leftover damage is taken by the creature. For your new spells, Counterspell lets you counter magical energy with your own. When you see a creature casting a spell within 60 feet, you can use your reaction to cancel it if it is 3rd level or lower. If it is 4th level or higher, you must make a spellcasting check of DC 10 plus spell level to cancel it. Dispel Magic lets you counter magical energy within an area that is under magical effects. This can be out to 120 feet, and if the effect is 3rd level or lower, you automatically shut it down. If the effect is 4th level or higher, just like with Counterspell, you must make a spellcasting check of a DC 10 plus spell level. Level 10 Battlemaster Fighters gain improved combat superiority. Your superiority dice are now D10s. For your final maneuvers, Repose lets you attack a creature that misses you with a melee attack as a reaction by spending one superiority dice. And if you hit with this attack, you can add the superiority dice to the damage. Trip Attack lets you spend one superiority dice to knock a creature down. When you make an attack, you add the superiority dice to the damage and force a strength save if they are a category large or smaller sized creature. Should they fail, they fall prone. Level 11 fighters now have extra attack times 2. You can now attack 3 times with a single attack action. Your character level 17 now, Booming Blade now does 3d8 extra thunder damage to the original hit and then does 4d8 thunder damage if they willingly move. Level 12 fighters earn another ability score improvement. Bump up strength once more. Level 7 wizards receive 4th level spells. For your new spells, Banishment allows you to banish a creature within 60 feet into a pocket dimension for 1 minute while you maintain this spell. You force a strength save, and if they fail, they are placed into a pocket dimension until the spell ends. If they are from another plane of existence other than the one you are currently on, they are sent back to their dimension when the spell ends. Magic Circle creates a zone of protection for one hour. You create a 10 foot radius, 20 foot tall cylinder of pure spiritual energy. When you activate this spell, you choose one type of the following creature, Celestial, Elemental, Fey, Fiend, or Undead. The chosen creature cannot willingly enter the cylinder by non-magical means, and if they try to teleport into it, they must make a charisma save or the spell fails. They have disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures within the circle, and creatures within the circle can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed. You can also reverse this circle and trap the chosen creature inside. Our final level is level 8 wizards and you earn our final ability score improvement. Place this into decks to improve your AC or maybe wear armor. Seriously, I would rather be putting this into strength, but you need better AC. For your final spells, Stone Skin allows you to ward against damage from one willing creature you touch, including yourself, for one hour while you maintain the spell. While active, the affected creature has resistance against non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Protection from energy lets you ward one willing creature you touch for one hour while you maintain the spell. While warded, the affected creature has resistance to one type of damage you choose. This type can be acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder. Now that we reach level 20, let's recap. Your stats are Strength 18, Dex 16, Con 10, Intelligence 20, Wisdom 12, Charisma 8. Your total levels are Fighter 12, Wizard 8. Let's dive in. Your attack profile is pretty damn good. You're dealing 1d10 plus 4, can attack up to 3 times, and a 4th time if you take a creature down or score a critical hit. 
You can also take a penalty to the attack and then add plus 10 to the damage. You can even supercharge the attack and deal 3d8 thunder damage. You can perform special moves that add d10s to the damage. You are a protector who can banish creatures, absorb damage meant for others, grant different resistances, lock down enemies, place up barriers, give advantage on saves, disrupt spells, and end magical effects. Finally, you're one tough fighter. Your AC is 16, can bump that up with a reaction, add 1d10 to your AC, can reroll saves, and can absorb damage. Downside. Concentration. So many concentration spells, and you can only use one at a time. Your magical damage is dependent on a second level spell or a cantrip. If you use the cantrip, you can't take more than one attack. If you use the second level spell, you must maintain it. This, of course, will be meaningless if you get a magical weapon, which you probably will. Speaking of which, does anyone else want an NPC sidekick that becomes magical weapons you can use? Sounds really cool. Oh yeah, speaking of weapons, your attack profile is limited to a 10-foot radius, 15-foot radius, using lunging attacks. Flying creatures with range attacks are going to suck for you. You also must remember that Booming Blade only works against a creature within 5 feet, so to use it you have to let go of your superior range in melee combat. Finally, your charisma saves suck. It's negative 1 and you only have 1 reroll. And like I said, frankly, you deserve a better charisma stat. Roll for stats and this should be good. It's time for you to go out there and save the innocent. Not just from evil witches and monsters, but also from the darkness of their own broken hearts. Thank you for joining me today. Make sure to like and subscribe to not miss a single new build each week on YouTube and Spotify. Make sure to check out my Patreon where you can help decide next week's new character. 